Hello my wonderful, beautiful friends, guys. Welcome back to our slash I don't work here lady. Where Karens can't seem to believe people when they say they're not employees. And in this episode, Opie saves a 12 year old boy from this raging idiot and the story is wild guys. I hope you enjoy the lineup, don't shake your heads too hard, and as always, you can send or link your post to this email right here, let's dive in. Okay, so this happened about a year ago. I was 24 at the time, a little on the chubby side, medium length blonde hair, and I could not fight my way out of a wet paper bag, and this will be important, I promise. I used to work at this gas station by the highway, and I was there for about 3 years. On this night, I was on my way to a date night with my boyfriend. I decide to stop in for gas and to check in with some friends who started working there. They were rather busy that afternoon, so I pumped my gas and walked in to grab a coffee. Now, the workers there wear a red shirt with the logo stitched on, along with black business pants, black shoes, and some also wore a red hat with the company logo. I was wearing a short red dress, tight black leggings, and heels. Now, I can see where a person with bad vision can mistake me for an employee, but not a young teenage girl and her brainless mother. Anyways, I was getting a small coffee made when I made a bit of a mess. Being that I used to work there, I automatically started cleaning the mess, but I noticed the paper towels were low. So I restocked the paper towels and checked the creamer. The store owner was in the back and she never minded if I helped out a little when it was busy like this. I had just finished cleaning and put a lid on my coffee when I hear someone asking from behind me where they can find a specific flavor of chips. I thought she may have been speaking to an employee close by, so I ignore her and walked off to the sodas to get my boyfriend his favorite drink. Apparently, this person behind me was a teenage girl and she ran off to tell her mother that I ignored her. As I'm grabbing my soda, I feel a hand grab my shoulder and yank me around. Now I don't remember exactly what was said, but it went something like this. The Karen basically says, Who do you think you are, ignoring my daughter like that? And me, being shocked and confused, said, Excuse me? That's when her daughter chimes in and says, I asked you where the chips were, and you ignored me. I tell her, I don't know what you're talking about. And at this point, I was backing up a little to get away from the mom's grip, and she yanked me back. I was able to pull her hand off my shoulder, but it took some great effort on my part. Karen goes on and says, My daughter told me that you were cleaning the coffee station and you ignored her. And it was at this point, it was finally clear to me that they thought I worked there. So I'd say, I don't work here. I made a mess and I cleaned up the mess. It doesn't mean I work here. And that's when Karen says, I want the manager now. But being the sneaky person I was, I decide to have a little fun. So I say to Karen, hey, I'll tell you what, meet me at your car and I'll pay for a full tank of gas and we can forget about this whole thing. Hearing me say that, Karen says, well, that's more like it. She then turns with a victory smile and she walks off and she tells her daughter to come with and the daughter just humps at me and follows. So I pay for my coffee, my gas, and soda. Obviously not her gas. They won't turn her gas on because they haven't paid yet. I then walk out to my car that's parked close to hers and say, All paid for, ma'am. Just give them a few minutes. To which Karen says, And why are you leaving? You need to pump my gas. I tell her, Oh, an employee's gonna be here to pump your gas in a moment. I have an important business meeting to get to. Please have a wonderful day. I then smile at her and drive off to my date. I did find out from one of my friends who worked there that after almost half an hour of standing there, she finally came inside and screamed at them for not turning the pump on. She even said that I promised to pay for her gas. Of course, my friends told her that they had no idea who I was, probably some random stranger playing a prank on her. She then threw a hissy fit that would make toddlers seem like little saints. And they ended up banning the lady from the store because she started throwing things around the store. They had to call the cops and she was escorted out. Guys, absolutely brilliant what Opie did. And that's one way to get a rude Karen off your back. Make them think that they're getting free stuff. And honestly, I just feel bad for the friends who had to deal with that tantrum that came from her not getting the free gas she was promised. And I gotta ask guys, because it was mentioned so many times in the comments, how many of you would have accidentally spilled your coffee on her when she spun you around like that though? Some people just gotta learn not to touch others, and what better way to learn than to have scalding hot coffee splashed on you? 
So this happened sometime last year, so the conversation is a bit paraphrased. I work for an unarmed security company, complete with a uniform and badge. We're not allowed to have weapons, but we can defend ourselves or detain people for the police. Also, I'm not one for confrontation, but I am a large, scary-looking guy. I'm over 6 feet tall, and I used to be a former linebacker during my high school football days. Usually, if I stop at the store after work, I take off my uniform shirt, but that day was chilly, and my undershirt is pretty thin, so I wore it into the store. I wasn't planning on buying anything, I was just checking prices for a birthday gift for my wife, so I didn't have a cart or a basket. That's when I noticed a young woman, who's in her early 20s, I guess. She came into my aisle, and she looked kind of scared, and she's looking around kind of panicked. She then sees me, and she makes a beeline towards me and says, Hey, could you please walk me to my car? Some creepy guy is following me and won't leave me alone. Now, this isn't the first time I've gotten this request, and I absolutely never say no if a woman comes to me with a request like this. So I say yes, and we start heading to the front of the store. Halfway there, this guy pops out in front of us and starts talking to her, screaming basically, saying that she forgot to give him her number after they talked. That's when I step between them and tell him that she does not appreciate him following her, and that he will be removed from the store if he persists. Now obviously I don't work there, but he doesn't know that. The guy responds that that's his girlfriend and that they're just having a little fight. The whole time, she's shaking her head with every word he says. I tell him it's time for him to leave, and that's when he flips out and starts screaming at me, getting all aggressive in my face. It takes all of 10 seconds for a bunch of people to notice, including one employee, who then pulls out a radio and starts talking to someone. As the guy's yelling at me, I keep myself firmly between him and the woman, and repeat that he needs to leave in a calm voice. I figure that a manager is going to be by soon enough, so I wasn't overly worried. And sure enough, a manager and some of the actual store security comes running over. The guy actually put up a fight, and they ended up restraining him, as he kept alternating between screaming and cursing at me, and begging the young woman to just tell them that he's her boyfriend. And the thing is, I overheard when she was talking to store security that she had never met the guy before. They were just in the produce section, and he started talking to her, and then began following her. I then explained that I was just shopping, and I didn't work there, as I walked her to her car. And we had a good laugh over that misunderstanding. She was very grateful that I helped her regardless. Guys, OP is a freaking hero for being there when he was. Like, what a gentleman. And yeah, it sounds like OP saved her from a complete nutso. Like, they talked for a few minutes in the produce section, and apparently, that guy thinks that makes her his girlfriend. Which is really scary, guys. This happened a long time ago. I've been lurking for a little bit, and decided to share an I don't work here story that isn't totally my own. But I hope it still belongs here. So at the time, I was working for a Target in the electronics section, suckering people into buying cell phones. Our specific uniform was khaki pants, a black shirt instead of red, and a massive Target logo on the back, and the word tech right beside it, along with a name badge. Now this is pretty obviously an actual I work here look. Well, I was helping a small family shop for some new cell phones that day, and they were all wearing heavy winter coats, thanks to the winter outside, and they were all rather short. By some twisted miracle, I managed to be the tallest person present, making it even more strange that I wasn't noticed first. Out of nowhere, I hear, excuse me, a loud, booming voice from behind me. As quick as I can, I put on my retail face, and ready to tell the man behind me that I can help him after I finish with my current customers. Except, he marches right past me, and he zeroes in on the youngest and shortest member of the family group. The kid could not have been over 12 years old, and he looks visibly uncomfortable because this massive adult, a man who had to be around 6 foot 4 with a still bleeding head wound, smelling of alcohol, was seemingly trying to corner him, becoming louder and more irate with each passing moment. The guy is screaming at the 12 year old saying, I know you can hear me, where are the radios? Followed by some choice comments on the young boy's race. All the while, I'm in the background trying to get the guy's attention as the actual person who worked there. At this point, the poor kid looks like he's about to cry, and I say, F it. So I do a big retail no-no. I touch the man. 
just a gentle tug on his arm so that he lets the kid get away from the display case that he's been backing him into. The guy snatches his arm back and reels around to stare at me, with my badge and shirt and khakis. But instead of realizing his mistake, the guy doubles down and starts going off about how this idiot won't show me where the effing radios are and I know you have them, and how we should fire this child who clearly did not work there. By this time, the family had closed back in around their child, and I was stuck with a very irate, very intoxicated man. And at this point, honestly, I'm kind of scared of him, having all the fighting prowess of a kitten. But the idea of leaving him with the family to yell slurs at while I ran to call security sat with me even worse, so I took the bullet. I say to the man, I'm so sorry, the radios are right this way, sir. I said that in my sweetest, most boot-licking voice possible. And I want to say that I proudly led him right down the aisle to security and stood strong while everyone in Target clapped. But I'm a small girl and a huge coward, so it was more like power walking to the radios while he slurred harassment at me from behind, saying stuff like, hey, do you got a boyfriend? Hey, I asked you if you've got a boyfriend. You want to date me? I'm real good in bed, you know. I can show you a real good time. So I managed to get the guy to the radios, pointed at them, and then ran away before he could yell at me for my number one more time. The manager catches me running away from the guy and offers to call security while she tells me to go into the back rooms and hide. Apparently the cops were called and he was escorted out of the store and arrested shortly after. I also did not get to see the family leave but they did stop by my manager to make sure I was okay. As much as it sucked to not get a sale, I was honestly just happy that the kid was alright. Like I said, I was bad at this job. Again, another story where OP is the hero guys. And contrary to what Opie said, she was no coward in that situation. As an employee, she put herself out there, she dealt with that drunk psycho, and she kept the customer safe, which is more than what a lot of employees would have done. Alright, so I'm not particularly proud of this one, but I felt it belongs here. Last weekend, I was at a big box home improvement store, looking for components for a little project I was working on. I wasn't dressed remotely like the staff, and I was listening to an audiobook with a set of Bluetooth headphones. This usually means that I don't want to be bothered, but apparently a guy in his early 30s in a pair of tattered jeans and a paint splattered t-shirt is just the one to ask for assistance. I also want to stress right now that I'm very much an average office dude. I'm slightly in shape, but I could use more work. I don't view myself as much more than an average guy in his 30s. So this middle-aged dude starts asking me where some product or other was. He asked twice, significantly louder the second time, and I glanced over at him and said, Sorry man, I don't work here, I don't know. At the same time, gesturing to my clothes and the obvious lack of a name tag. I went back to browsing the shelves, when all of a sudden, I feel my Bluetooth headphones getting ripped off my head. I looked quickly to my right, just in time, to see this guy throwing them on the concrete floor, with as much force as he could manage. I heard a distinct snap, which was appropriate. And this is the part that I'm not too proud of, I saw red. I then grabbed the guy by the front of his shirt, slammed him against the wall and said, I told you I don't work here you moron. The guy started to protest, so I push him harder against the wall and say, You couldn't get that through your dumbass skull though, and now you've assaulted me and destroyed my headphones. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna give me all the cash that you've got inside your wallet and pray that it covers the replacement cost. And if you make a scene, I'll give you something to scream about. Hearing me say that, the guy went from livid red to pale white. He then rummaged, brought out his wallet, and hands over $40. I jammed it into my pocket, then snatched up my headphones and left the store. I then got into my car and drove away as quickly as I legally could, eventually pulling into a grocery store parking lot to take several deep breaths. When I got home, I had a strong drink, even though it wasn't even noon yet. I had never been in a fight in my life, aside from horsing around with friends in middle school. And now I had threatened a dude in a store. No cops ever came knocking at my door, thankfully, so I think I'm safe. My headphones were fine though, shockingly. That is so funny guys, how the headphones still worked and Opie got away with 40 bucks. 
Like, consider that the a-hole tax for doing something stupid like that. And guys, I think it's safe to say that that guy is not gonna be doing something like that again for the rest of his life. Like, play stupid games, win stupid prizes. And I know I've said this before, but like, if you're stupid enough to rip headphones off of a complete stranger's head, you'd better be ready to suffer the consequences. And to be completely honest with you guys, I think the guy got off light because you never, ever, ever know when the person that you're messing with is at wit's end and is just like, F it. I will go to jail today. Let me just rearrange this man's face. The man who just ripped my headphones off my head. So yeah, keep your hands to yourselves and everything should be fine and dandy. Last week, I was picking some groceries up for the week when I noticed a kid trying frantically to climb a shelf to get a case of energy drink. So I reach up and grab it for her. I hand it to her, she smiles, says thanks, and runs off. As she's running off, she trips, sending the cans flying and getting sprayed from the popping cans. The poor girl starts freaking out a bit while I pick up the cans and try to calm her down. Little did I know, she wasn't freaking out because she felt bad for making a mess. All of a sudden, I hear a voice saying, What the hell are you doing? Why are you taking so long? A voice coming from down the aisle. The next thing I know, I see this like 17 year old girl storming down the aisle screaming, Why the hell are you crying? I told you to get me a case of this drink and meet me at the car. I tell the girl, it's okay, she tripped and she's a bit freaked out that she made a mess. The Karen looks at me and says, Who the hell are you? I say to her, I was just helping her get it down before she... The girl interrupts me and says, What the F? Did you knock down my sister? You can't do that. Where's your manager? I say to her, I didn't do anything. I was just helping her. The girl goes on and says, You just screwed up big time. Where is your manager? Get me your manager. The whole time I'm saying, What are you talking about? I don't work here. The girl just ignores me and says, Shut up. You hurt my sister and I'm gonna sue the hell out of this store. As she's screaming at me, the manager of the store walks up. The guy sees a mess of cans, a girl crying, a pissed off teen screaming at a 30 year old guy and says, What's going on here? The Karen says, Your idiot employee just stopped my sister from grabbing that case of energy drink and he hurt her. He pushed her to the floor. I'm gonna sue the hell out of you guys. The store manager then looks at me and asked, what happened? I told him I had no clue. I just handed the little girl the case and she took off and then she tripped. He then walks over to the little girl and says, are you okay? What happened? The girl wipes back tears and says, I didn't want to. She made me. The manager asked, she made you do what? The girl replies, she made me take it. I was supposed to grab it and just walk out to the car. That's when Karen chimes in and says, It doesn't matter now, does it? Your stupid employee hurt her trying to stop her. I'm gonna sue you for assaulting my sister. The manager then reached down and held the girl's hand and says, It's okay, let's get you cleaned up. He then motioned for the assistant manager to take the little girl to the back room to get cleaned up. Meanwhile, the Karen says, You think this is gonna save you? We're still gonna sue you no matter what you do. She then follows the assistant manager and the little girl into the back. The store manager then asks for me to follow him to the front of the store, where he flags down the police cruiser sitting in the parking lot. I don't live in a nice area. They call for another car, and the store manager and I watch Karen being taken away, kicking and screaming. She was screaming, what the F are you doing? Employees can't touch you. He hurt my sister, arrest him. Little sister, they hurt you, tell them. The whole time, little sister didn't say a word and just watched as she clung to the assistant manager. The store manager informed the cops that I didn't work for him and that I didn't try to stop the little sister. He then showed them the security tapes, so I was in the clear. The officers then took a statement and let me go. It turns out that the Karen was abusing her sister and forcing her to steal for her. Hopefully Child Protective Services was called and took little sister out of that horrible situation. Oh, it just breaks my heart guys that the big sister was forcing the little sister to steal for her. And you could just tell by the little sister's silent reaction that she's had it with her big sister telling her what to do. I just want to say that I hope she's in a safe place now and that big sister and mom get what they deserve. This happened over a decade ago. I was maybe 11 or 12 years old. This isn't an I don't work here situation, but more of an I don't belong here situation. I had gone to visit my godmother who was living in the capital, roughly 7 hours away from my home. All week, things were peachy and fine and I was having a blast as a kid. 
It was quite hot one day, and we decided that we would enjoy a day at a public pool near her home. It was me, my godmother, and my very young cousin. Once we arrive at the pool, we see that there's a group of maybe 10 kids with a lady in her mid-30s who is reading a book. Not really paying attention at all, she'll be named CK for Counselor Karen. All I thought of was cool, I got friends to play with and chat with. So I play with them and chat and we have fun. A few even spoke my native language. For a bit more context at the time, I was barely able to understand English. So back to the story. I'd played with them for nearly the entire afternoon. Suddenly, Karen comes into my life. She starts to gather all the children of her group and I say goodbye to them. I stayed in the pool with my arm against solid ground, letting my legs float and relaxing. And that's when Karen comes towards me. She grabs me by the arm and she tries to pull me out of the pool. I escape her grasp and I made my way to the center of the pool and that's when Karen screams, come back right now. At this point, I was confused and the Karen just kept saying, do you want me to call your parents? Don't disobey me. And at this point, I didn't have a clue what the lady was talking about. All I know was Karen was making enough noise to get the attention of my godmother. So my godmother comes over and asked, what's going on? Karen says, this brat is giving me a hard time. It's time to go back to camp and he doesn't want to listen. My godmother says, uh, that's my nephew, lady. Meanwhile, on the other side of the pool, all the kids are in disbelief as to what they're witnessing. As the argument goes on, I made my way to the other side of the pool to get behind my godmother to put my clothes back on. Once my godmother saw that I was done and ready to bug out, we made our way out of that place at a quick pace. At first, she asked me if I wanted to stay at the pool and that we could stay despite Karen, but lack of observation, I said no. Guys, some people have no business being in charge of a group of kids. Like, it's absurd. And this person says, I used to be a lifeguard. Camps are the worst. Once we had a child who didn't seem to be with anybody, who after swimming for a few hours, came up and said he was hungry. We asked who was with him. He said, they left already. The camp forgot him. They never realized it either. We had to call the place, and thank goodness their name was on the kid's shirt to get them to realize that they were missing a kid. So yeah, I guess some camps leave kids behind, and some try to kidnap kids. And that, my friends, brings us to another end of our slash I don't work here, lady. Guys, I hope you enjoyed today's stories. If you did, hit that thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed, consider subscribing so you don't miss these crazy stories. And if you missed yesterday's episode on the channel, it's an r slash entitled people episode, where a psycho Karen family wants OP's truck and they trespass to try to steal it. Guys, go check it out if you haven't. And myself and Stevie Boy will see you guys in the next one. We love you.